Hi, this is Brian in Indiana. I want to give you all a small update about this um, project ongoing here. And of course, we had the, the grid tie inverters hooked up. I got the regular household panel in running all my DC current. One leg right here. This is running all my 12 volt stuff. This is running 24 volts. Kind of looks like a mess right now because I just got the wires strand down. That way I made sure everything worked out good before I did all the looming and wiring and putting it through everything. Same as goes with like my charging wires right here for uh, my solar panels to charge in the battery. I'm about to change these to 4 gauge. Here's all my positives. Here's all my negatives here. This is my turbine 4 gauge coming into the positive post also. Um, of course I've got all of the batteries strapped together. All the way across. I've also got some underneath here going across. So, and another thing is I still have a pretty large bank available extra, and I have more upstairs as well, so I have not got these hooked up yet. So, I mean, to give you an idea, I'll pull back a shot and let you see. Like I said, it just looks like a mess right now. It's just because I've not, you know, done all the wiring and tightened them up, put them up through all the looms and everything like that. Um, this is my Cobra inverter 1500, which I don't care what they say, it'll never do 1500 to continuous. Um, the one I'm actually using is one I did some trading on Craigslist for, which is Trace 3000. Uh, it's a 65 pound 3000 watt inverter, which the one up here, they claim 3000 watts, and it, like I said, it'll never ever do it, and it only weighs like 6 pounds. So definitely a difference. Since I own an audio shop, I went ahead and put a capacitor here. That helps stiffen the loads when I draw hard with something like a hard start motor of some sort. Um, it definitely helps out when that first initial blow when you actually hit the breaker and turn everything on or the inverse starts pulling the juice. Um, I have a zero gauge cabling coming off here from my audio store. Um, I got two strands of four gauge going to my ground on there. Um, and then of course I got it tying over to the other inverter too, which I use this inverter right here for regular small stuff. Probably about to take it off. Um, I got my charge controller of course right here hooked up. Okay, you see I'm coming straight into one leg, straight into it. Um, then out the other leg over to my dumps. And here's a wire I'm going to use for something else when I run all of my other wiring. So there's another 4-gauge wire in there as well. Um, we got some uh, a lot of sunshine today, but I had it at 14-something a minute ago. We got clouds right this second came over. For now, here's some dumps. I went ahead and uh, use these. Here's one I'm turning on the dump real quick. So that shows you the halogen lights coming on to dump some of the power off it. It's bringing the voltage down. So, I mean, the system across the board, though, is working flawlessly. It's great. Um, as for all this right here, like I said, it just looks like a mess right now. It's actually pretty safe and organized right now. Everything is fused, double fused. I got fuses up here. I got fuses down here, so it's all fused. Um, earlier, I was getting about six or 700 watts off my kilowatt when I had all my inverters running. Because all you got to do, let's see, this right here is a 50-amp double pole breaker. Or it's in a single slot, but double poles. This right here goes all the way out of here, and it goes straight down into here, okay? And what happens is, if you go ahead and turn this breaker off, and then go down and flip this one on, we get a grid tie come on. Or we can have, you know, two grid ties or whatever, which is going to be that one right there going. So, and then, over here, this is my 24-volt leg. It goes to my 24 volts. So you flip this guy on right here. And this one right here will start going. This is running off the batteries. Of course, they're being charged by 24 volt solars. So I see that they're currently going, speeding up here. And then the wattage is outputting right here on the kilowatt. Now, I don't have a lot of sun, but I'm going to go ahead and kick on and turn off the charging leg on my 12 volt side. And let's go ahead and throw them an inverter on, too. So now we're going to reach over 200 something. Probably only go about 300 because the sun, like I said, is being covered. I've only got about 6 or 7 amps coming out of solar right now. I said, now I'm going to flip the 24 volter off. It's going to kill it out very much so. Now, mind you, it's only getting 6 amps, so like 60 watts or so. I said, we're getting clouds finally. We have had good weather all day long right before I shot this video. But it gives you a little idea. Like I said, I would turn my charging leg back on. I turned all these breakers off right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you a... Also, I'm going to get on the roof before it starts raining as well and uh, show you what the turbine looks like. It's fully installed now. It's not up high enough. I need to go up a little bit higher. So we'll get that taken care of as well. But I thought I'd just give you an update video for now. And like I said, just give you an idea how everything's coming along. I've done a lot of wiring. I've ran about a thousand foot of uh, four gauge and zero gauge through my house. I have runs of wire going from all my panels. Every panel of mine has at least 10 gauge double strand coming off each panel. 
Um, most of the, like I said, most of the panels I had were 40s and 60s anyhow. But I'm going to go ahead and get a roof shot for you, and we're going to go from there and uh, give you that update as well. So thank you for watching the video, and I'll give you a lot more updates.